So we are a little more than a week away from arguably, I don't even think it's that much of an argument, the biggest show in AEW's young history. We're talking about All In, Wembley Stadium, looking at 80,000 plus fans in attendance next Sunday. Yeah! I mean, real talk. This, you could say, comfortably is the biggest show, biggest event AEW has done up to this point. Like, I understand every TV show that they do is an opportunity. Some shows and some pay-per-views are really, really important. But nothing matches up to this. We've got to be honest about that, right? I mean, I look at this, and this should be a WrestleMania 3 type of show, WrestleMania 3 type of event for AEW. Not in terms of, you book it like WrestleMania 3, hell no. Not because the star power is the same, hell no. But in terms of impact and significance, like it should be a major cornerstone moment for AEW. And for all we know, it certainly could be, right? Now, you had a couple weeks ago, I think it was Bully Ray, Put this out there and it was a really fucking dumb idea. And then others latched onto this really dumbass idea about, hey, we're about a month away from All In and not a single match has been announced. And I just wouldn't announce any fucking matches. Yeah, that's stupid. Why would you want to tell anybody that might buy the pay-per-view what the fuck they might actually be buying, right? So I did a video a couple weeks ago talking about that and saying, I give Tony Khan way more credit than that. He's going to start announcing some matches soon. Needs to get on it, but he's going to. And he has. And as I look at this card, as we know it, as it's announced, as it's rumored right now, this card for All In, let's be honest, folks, this shit looks underwhelming. It looks mid as hell. And you're going to say, well, you know, there are injuries and there's this. And you may be giving it too much importance just because it's in Wembley. I'll talk about the injuries in a moment. But yeah! Like that's... It's not just another pay-per-view. Or it shouldn't be. In terms of the injuries, like it's fair to say, there's no Jamie Hayter. There's no Brian Danielson. There's no Pac. There's no Thunder Rosa, although you'd argue with the last two, how much are you really missing out on, right? But not having Hayter, not having Danielson there, is less than ideal. But you know what? Injuries are a part of the game. And if they're not going to be there, you got to do the best you can with what you have available. And I'm sorry, I look at this card, and I'm underwhelmed. And I know I'm not alone. Now, there's a distinction I'll draw here. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm saying it's underwhelming, and there is a difference. Let's understand that. Like, for a show that has this type of potential impact for the company, this type of significance, this type of importance, I look at this and say, this is the best you're going to put out there? I'm underwhelmed. I'm really, really underwhelmed. Now, you just look at this card, and you say, meh. Like, what, what's going on here? Like, you got the Blackpool Combat Club and somebody else versus Eddie Kingston, Lucha Brothers, Best Friends, Stadium Stampede match. Oh, boy, another John Moxley garbage show match. Yeah. Fuck, like, I haven't seen a bunch of those already. I mean, real talk. Like, if you were saying it was Eddie Kingston one-on-one -on -one against somebody where there was, like, a... It was just him and Claudio shit at this point. to be like, okay, at least I could get that. And it's one-on-one. -on -one. But now, nah, fuck this. It looks like a weak-ass New Japan show at this point. It really does. And then you've got freaking the Bullet Club and the Elite. Excuse me. The Golden Boys or whatever they are, Golden Showers, fucking Omega Nobushi, whatever the hell their names are, and Hangman Page. You know, basically the elite, though. Oh, there's old Bullet Club history there. It's 2023. Fucking Bullet Club is stupid, overrated as hell. Although I am a fan of the talents of Jay White and Juice Robinson, I will confess. But 
Jay White, Juice Robinson, and Takeshita versus Kenny Omega, Ibushi, and Hangman Page. I'm sorry. This is the best you could do? Chris Jericho versus Will Ospreay? Okay. Like, what? Legit, what happened? I thought they were going down one path of, like, it was Young Lion versus Young Lion. It seemed like we were building towards Jericho and Sting, and then that shit didn't happen. Maybe I was just over-reading it here, but... Jericho versus Osprey is okay, but does that really excite you? Hmm. Like, you've got Sting booked on All In. That's good. But he's being held down, like the Young Lions in wrestling always get held down, being prevented from being able to roar like the hell they should. Having to be Darby Allen's tag partner against Swerve Strickland and A.R. Fox. Where Sting is like a secondary player here. It's about Darby Allen. It's about Nick Wayne. This should be about fucking Sting. Have you told me this was Sting and Darby Allen one-on-one? -on -one? Oh shit, that's got a couple years of story and history to it. Sign me the fuck up for that. If he told me it was Sting versus MJF for the AEW World Championship, and Sting wants one more shot at the title, he wants one last chance at glory, fucking book it. But this? Like, give me Joker Sting, shit, yes. It's Sting, so of course I'm going to be fucking excited about it, but this is really the best spot you could put Sting in? You've got CM Punk and Samoa Joe, and those two guys will always work well together. That match always works. But you've just recently seen it. Meanwhile, when I look at some of the people not booked on this show, I'm like, I don't give a fuck what kayfabe reason there is. Ricky Starks is not booked to wrestle on this show. That's stupid. Guys like Miro, Powerhouse Hobbs, Warlow. Where the fuck is Warlow? Like, these guys aren't booked on All In. This is stupid. You look at the AEW Women's Championship. It's a four-way match, which already makes me go, Ugh. but there's no hater here, so that stinks. Um, you know, you got Tony Storm and Soraya and Britt Baker and Hikaru Shida. You're going to say Shida. No, I said it right. She sucks. Shida. Um... Like, is there any chance that that won't be a disorganized mess? Real talk? Like, is that really a women's match that grabs you by the sack? By the seat? Honestly, like, the, the two most interesting matches are the Tag Team Championship between FTR and Young Bucks, and the World Championship with MJF and Adam Cole, and even then you say, hey... You know, if it was Punk and FDR versus the Bucks and either Omega or Page, sign me the fuck up. Yeah. Now you're talking. FDR versus the Young Bucks. I'm not going to like the match. Obviously, I never do with these two teams working together. But at least I get it. I'll give it a pass. Like, yes, that belongs in this fucking show. That is worthy of this show. MJF versus Adam Cole would not be the main event that I would book. Frankly, I'd rather see MJF and Adam Cole, you know, continue to work as a tag team, maybe be facing off against a tag team for a tag team title. Just saying. But, but that will likely deliver. But again, as I look at this show, a few weeks ago, it seemed like we were heading towards RVD was going to be booked it all in. That doesn't look like that's fucking happening. What the hell are we missing here? The acclaimed aren't booked on here? Yeah, because why the hell would I want to have one of my most popular acts show up in London in front of 80 plus fucking thousand people talking about Scissor Me Daddy and being incredibly involved in the fucking show? I'm assuming a lot of the problem here is that for some inexplicable reason, instead of just doing all out at Wembley, they decided, Tony Khan decided to shoehorn all in here, which they haven't done in several years, a week before All Out, so you can't blow your wad at All Lit because you got to save some for All Out, and there's the fucking point. Like, the whole purpose of the show, it's called All In. You're supposed to go all fucking in. It's not supposed to be hedge your bets and half-ass in. It's supposed to be all fucking in, like all of the marbles. And if part of the reason this card feels underwhelming to me is because of the fact that shit had to be tabled because you had to have something for All Out. 
then shame on Tony Khan and AEW for putting themselves in this fucking spot that they didn't have to. Like, I wanted AEW all in to feel like they were going all in and making a major sizable statement. And there already is a bit of a statement made, to be clear, by a wrestling company that's not named WWE going international and being able to draw over 80,000 people. Like, that's a huge thing. That's a significant deal. Whereas several months back, you had all the negative AEW fans talking about, man, if they put thirty or 40,000 in there, that would be a great accomplishment. No, fuck you. Fuck your negativity. You all think I'm negative. I'm the one that's talking about they need to go after 90,000. They still technically haven't reached that. But they're damn near a sellout. 80,000 plus. But I'm the fucking negative one. No, I would just say I had higher standards of expectations of what this card could potentially be than what they've delivered. I hope this show will be better than it looks right now because right now this looks like a mid-ass pay-per-view featuring an underwhelming card. 